Hi everyone. I'm Lee. How are you currently feeling? Are you taking deep breaths? Let's make it better with this essential video, which will delight your inner being. And we're here to help. You can learn and change in a state of pain and suffering, or you can learn and change in a state of joy and inspiration. So when we begin to look at those states of mind that are now conditioned in the body subconsciously, most people expect the change and the transformation to happen instantaneously, but crossing the river of change from the old self to the new self is literally the neurological, biological, genetic, chemical death of the old self. And the right. moment a person doesn't feel like themselves any longer, they rush around and make the same choice that leads to the same behavior that creates the same experience that produces the same emotion. And then they say, this feels right. Well, no, it actually feels familiar. That place in the unknown is the perfect place to create from. And so when we understand that there's a new self that biologically can be reorganized, then when we cross that river and you can't predict your future, the best way to predict it is to create it in that place of the unknown. This is, the, this is fundamentally important to describe the process of change. Because when you wake up in the morning and you remember yourself as yourself, there's a feeling that you look for. And the moment you get in touch with that feeling, that feeling will drive a set of thoughts that will lead to a set of automatic programs or your body goes on autopilot and you function pretty much from that state. When you begin to become conscious of all of those elements that are deriving the old self, the thoughts, the behaviors, the emotions, and you're no longer firing and wiring the same circuits in your brain that produce the same neuropeptides that signal the same hormones that create the same feelings, your brain then says nerve cells that no longer fire together no longer wire together. There's a weakening of the connections that are connected to the old self. And as those neurons begin to weaken and prune apart, the memory of the old self is literally changing. If you're not signaling the body emotionally with the same chemistry, if the body's been addicted to that emotion, now the body is craving its emotional needs just like an addict because it's modified its receptor sites for more suffering, for more guilt, for more hostility, for more uh, unworthiness, whatever it is. So then as the body goes into transition, you've just stepped into the river of change. So most people, they white knuckle it in this process uh, because they're looking for something to reaffirm their identity as the old self. So the challenge then is when you're in that void of the unknown. If you woke up every morning and you said to yourself, okay, I'm going through crossing the river of change here, and you have some clear understandings of what you're doing, then you may want to say to yourself, before I open my eyes today or before I start my day, how would greatness live today? What is a future that I want to embrace? What would it emotionally feel like? Can I teach my body emotionally what it feels like to be honorable, to be passionate, to be in love with life, to be in a state of gratitude, and allow those emotions then to cause a level of auto-suggestibility to thoughts that are equal to that emotion that begin to fire and wire new circuits in your brain that begin to cause you to plan your behaviors. And as you begin to rehearse and practice in your mind who you're going to be when you open your eyes, you begin to fire and wire new circuits in your brain and begin to emotionally signal your body in new ways. And now you're in a new state of being because when mind and body are working together, that's a new state of being. So most people don't believe in that future because they, they haven't experienced yet. But that's because they're relying on their senses to determine reality. The quantum model of reality is beyond the senses. It's an immaterial understanding that transcends the body, transcends the conditions in your environment, and transcends time. Now, we have all the biological and neurological machinery to make this happen. But when most people are going through the process of change, they're white-knuckling it, waiting for relief. But my message is, if you can unfire and unwire and uncondition your body, then why not refire and rewire so that now as you begin to every day remind yourself of who you no longer want to be and then remind yourself of who you do want to be, you, there will be biological changes in your brain and body so they're no longer living in the past. They're now living in the future.
Now, mm -hmm. that's what the uncommon and the synchronicities and the, the um, wonderful things begin to organize in your life equal to a new state of being because if you're emotionally embracing an event before it's made manifest, then you're in a state of gratitude because a person's belief in something outside of them, some person, some thing, some place, could be a sacred place, and they begin to expect an outcome. And as they begin to anticipate and expect an outcome, what they're doing from a quantum model of reality is they're selecting a future potential and they're emotionally embracing that future. And as they begin to emotionally embrace that future, they begin to, a cascade of pharmacological changes that begin to happen in their brain and body that begin to signal new genes so that their body begins to respond because of their belief in that element. So now, we have seen people in placebo studies heal themselves of Parkinson's disease with a saline injection have 200 times the amount of dopamine created in their belief in some injection that's inert. Uh, a sham surgery where a person has an a, a arthritic knee that has significant amount of pain and loss of range of motion, who just has a, an incision on their leg without having the surgery, six years later still walking around with no pain in their knee and full range of motion. or people that have been diagnosed and have six months to live die to the day of that prognosis but when they do the autopsy on their body they have no cancer oh. it was a misdiagnosis so they died by thought alone so the, the person who moves in a state of religious ecstasy and can drink strychnine and have no biological effects or the person who chews on glass or gets bit by poisonous snake uh, and has no physiological change because of an energetic state of being. It starts to beg the question, when a person takes a sugar pill or a saline injection or goes to a place or has a procedure done and that procedure is a placebo, are they just feeling well? Is it just in their mind? Or is it in their mind and is, is it in their brain? And are there physical and epigenetic changes that take place as a result of it? And the answer is absolutely yes. yes. So they've changed their state of being by thought alone, which begs the question, do you need the sugar pill or the saline injection or the procedure? Or could you just move into a state of being by putting your attention and your investment in a possibility that exists in the quantum field, emotionally embracing it, and then allowing yourself to make something that's unknown, known. No. Uh -huh. So the answer to that question is absolutely yes, because when we did our scientific studies at our advanced workshops in 2013 this year, we saw people heal themselves of Parkinson's disease by thought alone, traumatic brain injuries, uh, cancers, by just changing their state of being without anything outside of them. So the placebo works like this. If I give you a pill and it makes your headache go away, then I give you a pill and it makes your headache go away, and you watch the television that says aspirins that look this color and look this shape makes your headaches go away, and you see a sports figure mm -hmm. drink whatever it is that makes his headache go away, sooner or later you're going to associate taking that pill, just like Pavlov's dog, with some physiological change within you. So when you take the pill and it makes the the headache go away, you notice some change in your internal state. The moment you feel differently inside of you, you begin to pay attention to whatever it was outside of you that created it. Right. That association, that associative memory, that conditioning is a memory. Right. So, that, so then we begin to anticipate that change every time we see a pill. So then if you substitute an aspirin for a pill that looks like an aspirin, and you're told by meaning, because meaning has a significant role in the placebo and it means something to you then in anticipation of that result because you're putting your meaning behind it you have intention behind it you uh, are conditioned to understand that there's some physiological change and you expect the outcome then those are the ingredients that begin to produce physiological changes by thought alone we're delighted to see you all the way through the video if you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends and let us know in the comment section below. There is a lot of love for you here.